Raider Sport Performance Aviation. Um, working on some pre-built Panther wing spars. Uh, we're making this video today to update the rivet squeezer um, video that we posted before uh, with a, some new updated instructions and um, that's the purpose of the video. So this bar has already been prepped, painted, uh, primed, has some of the rivets in it, everything's drilled and marked, um, ready for riveting obviously because we're riveting. So the spar is made up of a bunch of pieces that have 3 16 rivets and they're traditionally very hard to set. And we've come up with this kind of crude but very effective rivet squeezer that we've used for maybe a hundred or more sets of spars. And recently we made some updates to it. It came back in and I realized that I was getting a little bit uh, tired, if you will. And um, it's put in a lot of good hard work and it was time for a little bit of a spa day and to get uh, a little bit of rework done. So we did that and it now sets rivets better than ever. I'm really impressed with how it works. And we want to put out a new video to change the procedure. It's a little bit easier, a little bit faster, and it definitely does even nicer rivets. Uh, if you used it two or three years ago and everything was nice and tight, it did a really nice job. It's probably gotten worse and worse. But uh, if you get to use it here in the future, you'll be really, really happy with the ease of this and the results. Um, one of the weird things, SPA, we'll build you pre-built spars, make them beautiful like this if you want, but we'll also support you and, and set you up to have good success and to do these quickly at your own home. Um, by borrowing this rivet squeezer. We ship it out to you, you ship it back to us, you pay the shipping and you can use it as all the tools, everything you need. It's a little hydraulic squeezer, we'll show you how it works here. And um, so we're here to service either way. If you want us to build them, glad to. If you wanna do it yourself at home, here's for you as well. So I guess uh, that's kind of the introduction. Let's get into it. Okay, here we are. This is the basic, we're gonna call this a C-frame riveter. Um, you can see it has a roller in here that the spar rolls gently down on. Um, we always try to keep this fairly clean so you don't mess up your nice painted parts. Um, I'll show you a little bit about the general setup when we have the spar in there, how we do everything else, but I just wanted to describe the squeezer. Uh, this, it has some key features here. It has pins, pinholes on each side. This allows you to set the elevation of both the um, hydraulic uh, squeezer portion and the uh, rivet set on the back so that you can do the spars the, the rivets that are up in the central and the middle portion of the spar without any weird, funky, you know, uh, um, movements or anything. You can just raise them up simply to do the other elevations and um, it's kind of all set up to be adjustable. We have these little pins and to start out with the, the cap rivet rows, you'll just lay a pin in the bottom and that sets the elevation perfectly. These pins are in a little cup that comes in the spar squeezer. It's this, it's really elegant, you know been some builder provided this they'll be in here and um, as well as a, a cup rivet set and a flat rivet set so that's basically all there is to it the important thing to remember is you always want to have the factory head of the rivet the factory head is the, the side that's preformed when you get it the shop head is going to be the end we're squeezing and Rachel will probably throw a picture in here, but it's the end that we're forming. So you always want this against this, whether it's a, um, a protruding head rivet or a flush rivet, you would have this set in here. And the, uh, and the uh, flush head of the rivet would be here. The reason for that is this has a little bit of flexibility. It can self-align. The back one, the new modification to it, makes it pretty much absolutely rigid and it helps guide the rivet as it sets and keeps it from wanting to clench or lay over. Um, and it just does a really good job if you keep it this way. You will have to flip the spar four times, and we'll show you that during the layout here in a minute. Um, you'll have to sh flip the spar a few times to keep that orientation, but um, it's well worth it. Don't be tempted to just flip the rivet sets around um, and do them. Uh, so to put the thing together, it's this simple. You just slide the uh, new hydraulic side in and then we have this adjustable very elegant bolt <laughs> um, back section that goes in and this um, this is a little different than before in this area in that we have this locking bolt and when these threads and this bolt got some wear on them this whole thing there's a long projection so it could it could lean a little bit so as the rivet was setting this would lay off to one side sometimes and it was just inconsistent. It worked really well on some squeezes and terrible on other ones. 
this simple little lock bolt takes all the play out. When you lock it, it takes all the play out, so it's absolutely rigid, and it sets dead straight every time. It also still allows the adjustability. Um, just for, if you've seen old videos, this was the old one, elegant as well. Some complaints we had was that turning this in and out, this bolt was kind of small and it hurt people's fingers. This is much bigger, more leverage, and easier to use. But also we've changed the procedure where you don't have to adjust this uh, for each thing. You're only gonna adjust this four times for each bar. So it makes the, the whole system go faster and be just better, easier, and um, that's about really all I can say about that. Anytime you're going to put the spar in, I always just take this out and set it on my bench or on the ground because then it's all out of the way. It just slides out and you can set the spar in without beating it up. We, we prime and prep everything really nicely here. You know, the rivets are all perfectly set and beautiful. The worst thing is to bang these things around while you're trying to just maneuver the spar in. So I get it out of the way. The, the setup here is um, we use our big table and a piece of inch and a half tube and it's taped up and it just rolls back and forth on the table. We have the roller here and as the spar transitions, we have one of these cheap Harbor Freight uh, aircraft supply house, um, you know, roller stands adjusted and it's a little bit low. So the spar just goes out, leans down and keeps going. So to, uh, to do this, you're just simply gonna pick this up. You can see we already got a bunch of rivets done and uh, set it in there. You want to have the, the spar always relatively square to the squeezer. If it's off a degree, it's not gonna matter. It's being held vertical perfectly for you, so it always works well that way. And you can simply eyeball it square. And if you're not good at eyeballing, I don't have a square there. A lot of guys will lay a, uh, like a frame square. They'll lay it against the frame of this and have it along this. Um, then you can just look down on it briefly and make sure that it's square. If you've got anything set up, your roller really doesn't wanna move. Uh, squared this way, but um, it's and it's not hypercritical. But if you keep it within a degree or so, it sets very good. Then we we'll just take the components and drop them in. And that's uh, that's the way it goes together. You want to make sure this is. All the way down as you can see i've trapped a, a clico in there and i have it adjusted too tight it's probably well worth noting to uh run it out some when you do this and that brings up another good point if you want to jump a clico either on your front or your back side you can simply just lift up your component and go back down so you don't necessarily have to take them out it rolls really easy and um you, you know that's uh how we do that another little tip worth mentioning so on to how to make this actually work. As it's really important to note that we have every single hole that we don't want to rivet in is marked with something or it's impossible to get in. Um, these are spots where ribs and other things go. There's a Clico in them, etc. We have a big layout drawing that comes with the, the spars. We have tape over them don't do these etc bolts so if you're going to take out a clico and put a rivet in it you need to stop go back to the drawing and say why am i taking out this this uh, clico obviously you're going to have extra clicos in it to hold it together but when you take one out do not take one out that you don't want to rivet in because it sucks to put a very beautiful nicely set rivet 3 16 rivet in the spar and then have to get the drill and drill it out so uh just be cautious there um, some builders, Buddy and Bob, did a really great job of marking their spars so they didn't confuse things. They had like blue and red marks and things. Whatever it takes to do that, do it. Because again, it's, it's no fun to either drill out a bolt hole. Where bolts go, these are smaller. They're about 3,000 smaller of a hole. So if you drill them out, now you got to go down. And it's not impossible to fix, but you got to go hunt down oversized bolts. They can be expensive, things like that. So, you know, uh, just be, be mindful of that. Squeezing force comes from a little hydraulic cylinder and this uh, port of power unit. Um, it has a, a valve here that just releases and closes it, and then a pump. Um, in general, you're going to set all the cap rivets, these are the top and bottom rows, you're gonna set all of them with five pumps. And um, so that means five full strokes. And what I mean by that is you'll lift this up and tighten the gap between 
how we show you to adjust it in just a second. You're gonna tighten that gap and then you're gonna lift it up and when it stops, it's gonna stay up like this. Then from there, you're gonna go one, two, you know, count five full strokes and we'll show you that. Then you're just gonna release it. The center row here, when you move up to this row, you're gonna do six pumps. And this row is gonna be five pumps. And we'll, we'll kind of give you one last little tip at the very end about how to flip the spars over and what sequence to do it in. But so it's five pumps on the caps and six for the very center row later on. Um, but we're gonna start with the hydraulic little cylinder all the way back towards us. And um, we'll pull it tight against the proper rivet set, which is the one for the protruding heads. We're gonna make sure it's square. And then we're gonna take and, and screw this this um, rear set all the way in where it's tight. This nut is loose and it's tight, so it's bottoming it out on the rivet, just finger tight, not critical. Then we're going to turn it out about one half of a turn and lock this. It doesn't have to be super tight, it just got, has to be snug. I usually take a crescent wrench and just hold it and tighten it like that. It, as long as it's tight and it, it, it can move up and down, obviously, but this bolt won't turn by hand, you're, you're good to go. So now still pulling against it, you're gonna go back to your um, porta power and pump it. It's just gonna go freely. And you want it um, probably at least one free pump. That means it moves the spar over and takes up the gap. So this is one pump and then I go to go again and it's maybe a quarter of a pump and it's tight. That's about the perfect amount of room to let you slide the, the uh, next rivet into place without having to adjust this. And that was different, we used to tighten this each time we did the rivet at each rivet so your fingers would get numb from you know loosening and tightening because it goes really quick now we don't do that you just adjust it for the four different rivet lengths when you start a new thickness of spar and a longer rivet you'll adjust it and then you'll go do all those rivets so it just goes much quicker and a lot less strain um it is important that when you put in a row of rivets i usually put in about five and i make sure they're all the right length because even myself earlier today I put in a rivet that was just, I found it on the bench and it was one rivet length shorter and I just set it and I had to drill it out. And uh, when I was QA and the rivet on that section, I found it short, drilled it out, put a new one in. But just be careful about that. A little visual check will save, save yourself some time. Um, so we've got this adjusted. Um, again, one pump and then the handle comes up again and it goes down just a little bit, but just the weight of the handle. And then you're gonna pick the handle all the way up and Rachel can watch down here, and then one, two, three, four, five. And that will slide it out here for you. See how it just barely slides past the other rivets if you're careful and slow. Perfectly set rivet, no cracking. Uh, the diameter is gonna be well within spec. Um, the spar rivets are all loaded predominantly in shear and we have bolts throughout in the critical areas that take the tension loads. So the actual set size, as long as it's not badly cracked, like split in half, it had a little tiny crack on the edge or, you know, um, is, is a little under or oversized or under or over thickness, don't worry about it. Definitely um, with this procedure, it produces totally flyable, acceptable rivets like we build and fly ourselves. Um, Again, if they're set five pumps and six pumps in the middle, you can check them. Uh, they'll be really consistent. If you miss and go uh, four pumps or say four and a half, you got excited, you have to get it back up to that pressure that you were like at your four and a half pumps and then do your last half a pump. That's a little bit of a guess. So if you do that, which you will, just, just set it approximately the same diameter as the one next to it and leave it alone. It, it's just fine. Um, a little over or undersized or over or under thickness in this application on these spars uh, is acceptable. If you got any questions, you can always call, give me the numbers and we'll look at it. But uh, I would hesitate to drill out a rivet if it had a little, you know, defect in the head or something. The thick rivets, especially on the inboard, the large rivets, 3 16th rivets, especially on the inboard section where you got these thick layups are very difficult to drill out. And, you know, unless you have a milling machine where you can set them up in and get absolutely centered on them and do them, it can be difficult to knock them out because there's over an inch of material that are going through here. The other end is really not too bad, but especially in this area, if you've got one you gotta drill out, I'd give us a call first and ask us our opinion. Nine times out of 10, we're gonna leave it. Um, so again, I'll just do another one. We'll go back to where we were. Um, 
it's tight against my side and got my one and a quarter pumps to the handle handle all the way up one two three four five doesn't take much force um pretty easy and um you know same thing handles all the way up one two three four five this is a, this is what i was talking about right here when i pressed the last my fifth pump i felt that that it felt soft and that meant i didn't get the valve quite closed all the way in this particular case i sort of did it on purpose to show you what to do here you'll feel it and as you're doing you're like oh darn i didn't get the uh the valve closed all the way because that last pump isn't firm so all you're simply going to do is run it up to where it's tight and then it's probably going to take you'll, you'll kind of notice the pressure but i'm going to go a little bit more to get about the same height and it'll get really hard where it'll almost want to stop see i overset that one I slightly overset that one, and that's because I used all the ram stroke available. It's hard to true if you set it like I showed you, that um, that you have no more than like one and a half free pumps of the lever. You know, when it goes up and it just drops down, and then it goes like that. So if you do that, you're going to be set in the stroke of the squeezer where you kind of can't do too much damage because it'll go and hit a hard stop, and and the the cylinder's all the way rammed out. It will over squash it like I just did totally acceptable leave it alone but try not to do it again you know it's it's that type of thing so there is a degree of uh if you set it up like this it's kind of hard to do anything i really shouldn't say this but it's kind of it's much more difficult to do anything that's really damaging like flatten a rivet out or actually damage this bar because of the mechanical limits we've designed and because of the cylinder we've chosen so um that's pretty much it pretty easy uh you have any questions about this part of it you can always uh call and talk to me um, and uh, glad to work you through it. Okay, this is a view of the front side of this bar. Um, and again, we're gonna close the valve, make sure it's all the way closed. You can pull, cause this is clamped down. I may have failed to mention that, but I usually clamp this down. You're gonna pull against the uh, thing slightly, come up, it's gonna move back, cause the roller can slide. It's gonna move back. So now I'm at, I've got my like one and a quarter to one and a half free pumps. So now it's tight and full. I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five. And Rachel will probably post up some pictures at the beginning and the end of this rivets. But as you can see, there isn't a single smiley. It didn't even take the CAD plating off. We don't put any tape on this. We keep it very, very clean. But as you can see, the corrosion preventative uh, uh, cadmium is still on the rivets and everything. It doesn't, it doesn't damage them at all. And um, does a, a really great job. Really proud of how this thing works. It looks a little rough and it's, it's done a lot of work, but... It does a really nice job. Want to do one more? Yes, please. Okay, see this rivet's out a little. Sometimes you'll come across a rivet that's a little tight in your hole. It's always a good idea to have the, the proper size drill and a battery drill ready to ream one out if you needed to. Um, but I can actually pull, yep, see it wasn't very hard. I can pull that through. If you do that though, look on the back side and make sure your stack is still tight. You don't want to rely on the rivet to squeeze and pull the stack together. You want it to naturally lay tight. A lot of times when you get to the thicker end on the inboard end, when it has the quarter inch laminations added in there, you don't have to worry as much about that once you get one rivet set because they're stiff and from rivet to rivet, it won't deflect. Um, it's always better to have the rivet go in just kind of gently than, um, than it is to have to like force it through. If you got to push it more than finger, like thumb pressure, pull it out, run the drill through it and it'll drop right in. Um, it's usually like about a 189 drill bit. And um, I think it's a number, well, I'm not going to quote it because I'll, I'll be wrong. So we'll do one more here again. There's our one and a quarter and then. And that's, uh, that's it. Okay, here's a little further back view to get some perspective on things. Sometimes the close-ups are really informative but they're kind of hard to get the general uh, thrust of what's going on. Um, so we moved to another section of the spar that's got one more uh, thicker layout. I always take the rivets I'm using and I move the other ones out and I just take the amount of rivets I need till I get to the next section and I stack them up over here so that um, I run out of rivets and I have to think before I jam one in this hole and try to smash it. So just little things to try to keep you organized. Um, if you're a scatterbrain like me, it's very helpful. Again, we got the, the uh, hydraulic re uh, valve released, fully open and 
the uh, rivet and spar pulled against the set. We'll bottom this out, snug against it, not tight, just finger snug. And then we'll back it out about a half a turn. Um, the real test is how many free pumps you're gonna have of the hydraulic handle. I'll check it right here real quick before I lock that down. And um, so one, I got right at one and one, one pump is gonna be about the maximum, uh, the minimum you can have and still um, be able to get the new rivet, you know, unsqueezed rivet past the two, you know, inside the remaining gap. If you go more than say one and a half um, free pumps, you'll risk running to right to the end of the travel of the rivet squeezer. And um, sometimes when it rams all the way to the end, it'll tend to stick and you gotta pull it back. So you know when you got it right, if you got one free pump and it's not sticking, you know, at the very, uh, where, where when you're done squeezing when it wants to stay out, um, you're, you're right in the range. Again, one to one and a quarter free pumps, one to one and a half, uh, works really good. So, got it all set up. There's our one and a quarter, and then one, two, three, four, five. Release fully. There we go. One and a quarter, one, being kind of slow and methodical. And I'm um, gonna have to remove a, a clico that's in my way here. And so the process goes on, making sure it's somewhat square. And that's that. So when you run through all these different size rivets, I usually try to set up and do all of them. A thing to note is the rivet orientation isn't really critical. We always, except for at this end, where you have the thin 32 thousandths um, spar web joining the thicker caps, you always want the factory head against the sheet metal. In general, general riveting, uh, riveting practices, the factory head is generally always on the thinnest section of metal. Once you get over about 40 or 50, 60 thousandths, that kind of doesn't matter anymore. But in our case, if you get, uh, there's a laminate that's uh, 60 thousandths on the back. If you kind of get aggressive setting them, you can kind of, you know, uh, distort it a little bit. Um, if you do a good job and set the thing up, just like we showed you five pumps on those, uh, it, it works really nicely. So um, mainly here, it's critical that you have the factory head on the front side. We always uh, put them in with standard aircraft convention when possible, and that's all fasteners will go down or aft. So we have the factory pre-made head on the front side. Um, we do that on both spars. This spar, as you can see, we can do that all the way down because the spars overlap kind of like a glider in the, in the wing. That's what allows us to pull them out very quickly and fold them and also makes them very strong. So it pins into the, the fuselage through these pins and this, uh, this spar is actually upside down, as you can see, because it would have negative dihedral, but they, they pin together and, and through the fuselage. So this section of the spar is essentially that big beefy center section you see in any airplane that has cantilever wings. This is it. It's part of the whole spar. On each half, it goes together and then pins into the fuselage. So it's, uh, it's extremely strong. Um, it's efficient in terms of weight. And um, especially if you got to fold the wings, it's, it makes things not critical. Um, many, many airplanes, Sonics, RB12, um, many, many gliders, uh, heck, Lanceers, some of them have overlapping spars in the middle. Um, so there's a lot of airplanes that use this design. But what it's going to, how this affects the layout and um, the rivet orientation is that these have to be flush down the caps so that the other spar can lay against it and they're flush as well. There's a few flush bolts that'll go in here and and that's so the spars can mate and not have any um, offset for or aft in the wings. Um, I mentioned all that to say on this side, you can just happily keep going and rivet, then come up, raise it up. You know, you'll pull this little guy out and put it over here and do the next row up, you know, set this in here and it will do this row. And then you'll simply move this up and it will do this row, 
for me, these sides, left and right sides, are slightly offset. I've always used, when it's set up this way, I've always used the right hand sides and they work very well. There's an, this set is offset a tiny bit purposely so that if you are a little bit off, you can just put them over there. Some builders have actually used different size bolts, laid pieces of cardboard on top of it, various things. I've never had to do that. I've always used this side and it's with these pins that are little bullet shaped pins that we send with it. It's always worked perfectly. Same thing for the back, you raise it up. Back is not critical at all because it has a big flat area where the rivet can set against. So when you get down here, where these are flush, you're going to change the rivet set out. Again, it's nice and you know clean and smooth. They have a little bit, we send them out, they got a little WD-40 on them so they don't get rusty and they're polished perfectly. They won't mar your rivets up. They won't, um, they won't even take off the primer. If you've got your uh, countersink set right, it'll leave a perfect rivet. Um, it does, again, I'll quit saying it. I'll quit bragging, but it does a really good job. Um, so you'll just keep riveting all the way down. You'll come to your center rows and, and everything will be great. These center ones, because they're recessed below the spark cap, the web ones here are standard protruding head rivets. The, so you would run all the way down and do these center rows and then remove the, the hydraulic squeezer in the rear, um, rear rivet set and then you'd flip the spar this way, end for end. You know, however you do that, take it outside, turn it around and flip it over, but this side is gonna go down and this end's gonna go out. And then you'll start at the, the, the short rivet end and you'll just work your way down and do them all the way down, just like you did this one. Then you're done. Then you put in your close tolerance bolts in, in these few areas, your pins and spars are done, ready to go flying. Um, on the other spar, you're going to do that identically to this point. All the protruding head rivets are going to be on the front side. When you get, and that's the real front side of the airplane. Um, and you can tell that the front side of the spar always has the tie down ring on it. It gets confusing. But the continuous cap is on the aft side. And the shorter cap basically is there to mount the fuel tank rails. I mean, you know, to mount the fuel tanks. Um, it also has the tie down ring. Your tie down ring is gonna bolt into there. So that's how one way you can tell which is the front side. So all your rivets are gonna be there. On the inboard portion, this long cap is gonna come all the way down and maybe Rachel can post a picture online. There's some good drawings that some builders provided and things. We have pictures and then the, the, the real shop drawings show this, but it can get confusing. When you get to, the, um, to that spar, this cap is gonna extend all the way down and it's gonna be cut away on this side because they overlap. In that respect, you're going to take and flip the spar over again. So you would, you would simply, that's what I said earlier, you'll have to flip the spar four times. You're gonna to have to flip it because you're gonna want, the rivets are essentially gonna be on this side and you want the shop head against this. Some people will lift it up and turn this whole unit around, but I feel it makes it a lot harder to manipulate things. You got the hose crossing over your, your uh, rivet set. It is in theory possible to remove these and swip them or swap them around. But again, I don't really recommend it. I recommend leaving it set up just like it is and, um, and, and uh, just flipping the spar. It's, it's, you know, take the rivet sets out, flip it around, and it should be obvious when you're working on it. Um, and that's about really all I have to, to give you on the layout. Um, if you're slow and methodical, after you've got it all ready and you just kind of get into a rhythm and setting them, and um, usually the first spar will take you maybe four hours. I did. Uh, the other spar, the mate to this one yesterday, and it took me about an hour and 25 minutes to set all the rivets. Um, I, I've done it before, I've laid them out carefully. I realized the little little issues not to make mistakes, only have the rivets out for your thickness that many, keep things segregated out. When you get done with a little section, stop for a minute, regroup, be careful, don't get in too much of a rush, and it just flows much better. One little mistake on riveting will cost you 30 or 45 minutes of drilling something out, maybe calling me, whatever. It's better just to take your time. I think any builder can easily set all these rivets in one spar. Even if it took you six hours, um, it's a step that would cost a lot of money to have someone else do like us. Um, it also brings up another thing. When you can borrow our tool for setting it, most people stress about setting the rivets. But even if it takes you a Saturday and a Sunday to do, or whatever, to do both spars, we'll give you the tool, whatever. That's really easy. The prep work is what takes the time. Um, getting them ready, scuffed, etched, primed, um, letting them dry, getting all the holes the right size for so your bolts have a nice 
snug fit, um, but not a loose and not a fit we have to beat them in. Those things are what take the time and experience. And I would, and it's, but it's also the, the part that people don't tend to stress about. They stress about setting rivets, which as you can see is really easy and quick. The prep works really, really important. So, um, ever have any questions here to help? We want people to fly safely and successfully. Um, the spar is one area where we never make compromises. If it's not right, I've recommended people build new spars. Um, there's almost always a fix, especially if you don't let it get too far. The most important thing to do is if you get a loose hole or something blown, do not get out a quarter inch drill and go up to the next size fastener. That is basically uh, warrants a throwaway uh, from me, unless it's in certain areas and things. So there's two oversized fasteners you can use. We always have a repair for a slightly wobbly or a misdrilled hole. Get, get in touch with me, but do not get out the next size bigger drill bit and uh, and start going to town on them. Um, I guess that's all I really have to add. If you need anything, give us a call. Uh, shoot me a support ticket. Glad to help and uh, get out there and smash some rivets.